350 Chevrolet rebuild overhaul update. Um, all the pistons and rods are installed. I have uh, torqued all the uh, main bolts to 75 and the rod bolts to 45. Now the mains I did in where I snugged them down with the quarter inch impact driver then came back through in two passes to put them at 75. Sometimes uh, I use three passes, but I just, I was like, man, I want to get this thing torqued down. So I went ahead and did two passes to get my 75 on the mains, but I did follow the three passes. Uh, I think, yeah, I started out just snugging them down by with a nut driver. Then I did, uh, when I started torquing the rod bolts, I went with 15, 30, and then 45. I believe is what I did. But I did three passes and I kind of equaled out the, uh, you know, went side to side on the rod bolts until they until they came to torque. That way I know it was evenly distributed. But I was going to um, check the mains one more time because I have, um, oh, I'm gonna basically start putting the bottom of this thing back together and, uh, I wanted to just make sure everything was right. It's my antique Craftsman torque wrench. You know, a lot of times you'll see people go and double click them. An engine builder I worked with years ago absolutely hated to see someone do that. So I never double click them. Even if I'm gonna click it twice, I'll just do a strong pull to get my torque. Because he had, oh, I can't remember what his reasoning was, but he hated this. I don't know, he just hated it and didn't want anybody doing it. So basically I just lean into it to get a nice smooth pull on the torque wrench. That way you know you don't get any false readings or anything weird by double clicking and messing up your torque wrench. So all my mains are at 75. Grab this other torque wrench. This is the first time I've used my uh, 3 8 What is this? It's from Harbor Freight. So it's their pro series or whatever. So knock on wood, everything hopefully I don't like that. That thing has already been torqued. All right, I'm gonna move this thing back and forth. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I have not, <laughs> see? why you should write this stuff down. I have not final torqued the rods until now. That's the reason I'm making the video. Eh. But you gotta listen real close because this Harbor Freight torque wrench doesn't click as loud as my Craftsman. And as a matter of fact, when you have it on the smaller, like 10 pounds of torque, you almost can't hear it. <laughs> you almost gotta just wait for it to go. Cause when it clicks, it'll break like boop. And uh, what I noticed a while ago was when I said it set on 15 pounds, it uh, was really hard to tell when this thing was hitting its torque. Cause I couldn't hear it click but I knew it was hitting the 15 pounds because I could feel it release in the mechanism. So I was like, okay. And before anybody freaks out, I'm gonna rotate this engine counterclockwise because I know a lot of books will say, oh, don't ever, don't ever reverse rotate your assembly, but it doesn't hurt anything. 
is on this engine, you have to you have to uh, get all of this assembled before you can put on your windage tray to move towards your cam and valve train. I think I mentioned that in that previous video. Well, see what I was talking about where I, I don't just go right to my 45. I move back and forth, tightening each bolt just a little at a time until I get to my torque. I've just always done it that way and I've never run into a problem. So I don't know if that follows with the way you guys do it or what, and you will notice that I always double and triple check everything because I don't want anything to <laughs> be missed. Let's see, I'll turn it, you know, an eighth of a turn or whatever, and I'll go back to the other one, turn it a little, go to this one until I get my 45. Notice I cheat. I use a lot of my leverage when I'm doing these crazy things so I don't wear out my arm. When they're up top like this, I, uh, oops. Again. Everything's protruding the same. Like when you look at your thread engagement for the nuts, and just for peace of mind, I will probably go through this and check all these torques, specs, with my Craftsman, just because this is the first time I've used this Harbor Freight torque wrench. And I wanna make 100% sure this thing tightens these bolts equal to the one I've had good luck with in the past, so. See how I get on there. Get my leverage behind it where I can really push on it. But that's how you check your bottom end fasteners. Go back and double check it, double check it. Don't be afraid to um, run through these things as many times as you have to, to feel comfortable. Because <laughs> ultimately, sorry about that. Ultimately, you know, the quality of your torque spec, the cleanliness of your build, the clearances that you set up, Everything plays together to make a good, long-lasting quality build. I see on this, I was looking through my little video thing here. You can see where Morton's, I can't remember his first name, but uh, he's the big crankshaft grinder and the preferred balancer guy in the Kansas City area. He was the one that we sent that crank out to and had him check it and polish it. And it's still standard on the rods, standard on the mains. I see where they had wrote it on there with some kind of a paint pen where it says R-S-T-D-M-S-T-D. So I was just 
kind of admiring his penmanship. So anyway, um, I will probably go over those rod bolts one more time with my craftsman because I want to make sure they're actually at 45 and not some crazy uh, lower torque or higher torque or whatever. I guess I wouldn't know if it was higher because as long as it clicks on 45, I think I'm going to go ahead and run it. But uh, as soon as I get that all taken care of, you know, double checking the torque on my rods. Uh, I've already done my mains like three or four times. I just want to make sure after setting overnight that the mains were still happy. So I can uh, get the oil pump and the windage tray mounted because now that the pistons and rods are in and finalized, part of what holds on the windage tray, the front bolt for the windage tray is the actual oil pump bolt. So I can get all that done clean up my rails with brake clean and get the oil pan put on this thing. Well, of course you start with the timing chain cover and then the oil pan, but I was just kind of showing you guys the process of uh, torquing down these rod bolts. And keep in mind, I did the rods in three actual steps, 15, 30, and then 45. And uh, everything looks to have come out good. I have a good smooth rotational resistance, nothing's binding. Um, when I put the pistons in, because there's, there's an unlimited amount of opinions on how you should lube or not lube your, your pistons. What I do is I clean the journals on the crank. I clean for a final time the cylinder bores. I wipe out all the bearings in my big ends of my rods. Um, what I do after that is I take and I, 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 I don't want to say liberally, but I will coat the cylinders with motor oil. Um, I'm not all that picky. Some people are very picky about what weight motor oil, but I will basically coat the cylinders with engine oil. I will oil the piston pins with engine oil. But as far as my piston rings, uh, compression and uh, oil control rings and a little bit on the skirts I spray them with WD-40 um, I do not like to assemble engines by dipping them in oil and, and I have done that when I very first started building engines I uh, used to dip the pistons in oil and really all it does is make a huge mess um, it can cause a lot of smoking and it can actually cause damage to the rings. Um, it's just been my policy since I work for uh, uh, that speed shop that used to be in Grandview, Missouri years ago to uh, only lubricate those piston rings with WD-40. And uh, the engine oil that I put on the cylinders is plenty of lubrication for startup. You get a good, solid, fast ring seal and you're good to go. So anyway, this is just one more video in the series of the uh, freshening of the 95 uh, 350 engine with the hydraulic roller cam. Thanks for watching.